Hi guys, Bomber here, welcome to the channel and in this first video I'll be playing War of Omens, a deck builder game and I'll be showing you some budget decks including all the commons and uncommons which obviously are easier to find and to upgrade. Uh, those decks, as they are budget decks, are not meant to be competitive uh, or anything like that uh, but uh, they are meant uh, to, for newer players uh, to um, farm some silver in a single player mode and in the meantime uh, learn how to play the game. Uh, so let's uh, start with the first deck, uh, with the Vespitole. Uh, it's a Listrata deck which is the first hero you'll be unlocking and um, um, it's a deck uh, uh, based on Alice, so we have uh, Courtesan, uh, Wealthy Patron, Wintner, Mercenary, Militia and uh, um, as the hero power of uh, Captain Distrata reads uh, each turn gain uh, plus one food um, we'll be using this food to convert it uh, into uh, other resources like uh, Skulls with Cortesan, uh, Gold with the Wealthy Patron and Vintner is um, to obtain even more food, to convert those food uh, into even more resources. Uh, we also have Spice Road and Trade Company to get uh, more food. Uh, we have Mercenary and Militia, uh, which we can uh, use to convert the food into attacks, but um, they also serve the purpose uh, to protect our allies. And for this we have also Palisade. Um, Loan is uh, to get a, a head start and uh, play some powerful cards uh, early on um, in the first turn or, or so and uh, Ballista is just a good alley which uh, uh, comes into hand uh, when uh, you, are, um, uh, you will be cycling uh, the alleys back and uh, it's just a good addition to the deck so let's uh, jump into the first match uh, as uh, I have all the cards upgraded and I can't uh, showcase the deck uh, with the downgraded cards I'll be playing at the Grandmaster difficulty so the cards are upgraded but uh, the difficulty is also higher so this deck should perform um, uh, also as well uh, into Neofit or Apprentice mode uh, if uh, the cards are not uh, upgraded to the max <laughs> So, in the first match uh, we are against Matris and uh, he actually started pretty passive so we can uh, start by playing uh, a Ballista and uh, put some pressure on him as uh, it reads uh, on turn attack uh, two times uh, so it's a uh, good card early on and we'll also protect it uh, with Palisade uh, because he doesn't have a threat on board uh, already but uh, we see that Ballista will attack him and uh, misdirect will intercept uh, those two attacks and redirect them to the foe so it's a uh, retaliate uh, if you say and so we'll see that uh, if we do not uh, protect uh, the ballista it will die from the retaliate of misdirect so actually we see that palisade uh, protected our ballista and we'll uh, continue the, to pressure our opponent uh, by playing uh, a second ballista now we see that uh, he stole a uh, courtesan thanks to stolen plants, but we'll kill the courtesan uh, with ballista. We'll replay the palisade um, to protect our ballista. And also you see that uh, I always play the Vespitole cards first. Uh, why do I do so? Because we see that uh, now I have 4 coins in hand and 7 in our inventory. This means that 6 of those 7 cards are coins and 1 is not. If I First of all, play the coins, uh, let's say the three I, I did have in hand, and uh, the palisade uh, as the last card. I, I would have had uh, uh, ten cards in the inventory, which only one of them was uh, not, uh, was a Vespitoli card, sorry. Uh, so I had one in ten chances uh, to draw the Vespitoli cards and start cycling back again. Um, Instead, if uh, when, when I played it uh, with uh, the three coins in hand, I had uh, only seven cards in the, into the inventory, and so I had uh, actually eight, maybe, and uh, so I had one in eight chances to uh, redraw the Vespitole cards. And so by playing the Vespitole cards first, I increase my chances to play uh, uh, cards which are not coins, which are bad. Uh, so I'll uh, play a spice. I buy a spice road to increase the size of my inventory and get the cycling going. 
I'll buy a militia just to get uh, some additional pressure and uh, to recycle uh, later on. We see that he plays a frame, so it uh, intercepts some attacks and uh, redirects it back, like a bigger misdirection. So now I'll play a Vintner to um, hopefully get some uh, additional food. And um, right now we do not have allies which uh, capitalizes on food, um, if not uh, militia. But right now you see the power of this deck. I'll buy a wilty pattern and uh, convert uh, the food into gold. And so with, uh, I can buy with him with this uh, trade company which gives me even more food and um, increases the sizes of my inventory and uh, get the cycle uh, going even more. Actually, that food can be later converted uh, into militia attacks. And uh, if we, if he didn't have, uh, if he did still have uh, some allies, I'll, uh, I'd uh, attack with the militia. But we see that uh, his board is uh, clear, and so we do not need to to pressure him even more. We'll play a courtesan to to get additional resources from her. And right now we see that we are really close to lethal, uh, as we have 5 food, uh, which we will convert into schools, and ac actually we miss only 5 to kill him. We see that we are also low on health, so we'll see if we can kill him. Yes, we can kill him. And so, GG. Now, the second deck I'll be playing this uh, in this video is a Daramek deck with Lyat, which is also the first hero you'll be unlocking. And uh, I'll play a deck uh, for each faction, so you can start playing with those factions and uh, learn how to play them uh, a bit with those decks. Uh, this uh, deck is a Daramek deck uh, with Liet as an hero, as I said. Liet uh, hero power reads uh, for each card you play, 15% uh, chance to gain uh, plus one random resources. Um, so this deck uh, uh, is uh, all focused on playing uh, a bunch of cards and uh, has also some rights, which is uh, which are uh, right of combat and right of brood, uh, which reads uh, um, for each card you play attack. Uh, with Ride of Combat, and uh, for each card you play, plus one random resources with Ride of Brood. So we see that this deck is all focused on um, playing a bunch of cards. So to play a bunch of cards in um, one turn, uh, um, we have uh, a bunch of allies like Red Catcher, which uh, draws uh, an additional uh, ally, uh, and a bunch of allies like Orphan Gang, uh, um, who attacks uh, on play, or uh, gold panners who uh, gives uh, plus one gold on play and um, scavenger uh, which actually cannot be seen for the skin but uh, uh, it gives you one, plus one resources when played and uh, all those uh, on play effects are all amplified with overseer uh, which doubles all the on play effects um, and so we'll play all those allies uh, and gain uh, some bonuses from the righties and uh, some bonuses by playing uh, those allies uh, uh, it, uh, themselves. Uh, also we have uh, Shepherd Gifts, uh, which is uh, a nice card uh, that you can play early on to get uh, an additional resource uh, every turn, and so it's just a good card. And also um, Serpent Altar, as uh, we'll be attacking a lot with the uh, right of combat and all the resources we'll be generating. So it's just a good card to get even more attack and uh, finish the game early on. So, let's jump uh, into the match. So, here we are against uh, Regent Marsh. And uh, we'll start by playing the coins and holding uh, from buying uh, stuff because we'll start with uh, the right of combat uh, and so we have more coins in hand uh, on the first turn we, we are playing the right and so we can play more cards and so more attacks uh, ca can come from the right of combat. Also we'll um, play also the gold banner so we can get uh, additional attacks and also put a little bit of pressure on the opponent as the gold banners will be getting uh, as a gold each turn. 
uh, we'll also play a Shepherd Gift to gain even more um, resources. We did not uh, kill the, the Soldier even if we could, because one attack per turn is not uh, too much. And uh, instead, uh, us uh, uh, wasting uh, three resources on her is um, a big deal. So we'll keep him uh, here on board for uh, the time being. Now that we actually redraw the redraw the right of combat, I can show you the combo with Serpent Altar. As the right of combat will be attacking each time, and each time it attacks, uh, the Serpent Altar uh, will have uh, one on in um, on four chances to to attack an additional time. And so that's uh, a pretty nice combo. Uh, you see, each time. Uh, it uh, shines and uh, uh, fires uh, that uh, green thing is uh, because it's activating. We convert some food uh, into gold with uh, gold panners. We actually hold on to the right of combat this turn so we can uh, build a bigger turn uh, on the next time. Now I'll uh, ping the, the spot there and hopefully uh, he will kill uh, uh, our allies because we can then play the Rat of Combat and redraw that ally with the Rat Catcher and so we'll get uh, an additional attack from it. Just a little tip uh, to get that uh, that attack uh, into. And actually now we are pretty close to, to kill him and so we'll try because thanks to the Serpent Altar we'll hopefully kill him. Let's see, one other uh, proc. And yes, we killed him, GG. So, the third deck I'll be showing you uh, in this video is a Metris deck um, with Valdorian as a hero and uh, his hero power reads each turn 35% chance to draw a card from foil and if you play foil's coins uh, you have 35% chance to gain an additional gold. So it's just a good hero power to have. Um, if you draw a coin you have an additional chance to gain uh, plus one gold so it's just a good economy uh, hero power and also if you are lucky enough to draw a card which is not a coin you are able to get an additional value um, don't know if you draw a soldier from uh, Vespitole or stuff like that uh, it's just a good hero power but uh, it's not a hero power you could focus uh, on too much and so the deck uh, uh, is focused on this card which is Coupe de Grace uh, which reads uh, for each card you control attack for zeros uh, two times and so we have a bunch of uh, cards like Belladonna, Satchel Bomb, uh, Subterfuge, Silver Lanes, uh, Reconnaissance, uh, Informant and Misdirection uh, which stays on board and so actually feed the, the each card you control so we, we will be controlling a lot of cards so that uh, Coupe de Grace will be bigger and bigger and so we can kill our opponent fast for that reason we also run Ambush and Waylay uh, as an additional tool to kill uh, stuff uh, of the opponent and hopefully kill the hero card, uh, sorry, the hero. So let's uh, jump in the match. So we are actually another time against uh, Valdorian himself, uh, a mirror match another time. So we'll start by playing an informant to get uh, a card into the bank, which we'll not play as uh, we do not have uh, resources to seal. But we'll uh, get uh, uh, a card from uh, his deck, which will always be a coin as uh, is uh, a Metris deck. We'll play a Belladonna to start getting the damage uh, going, and also by placing a, a structure on the board, so we can. Uh, uh, synergize it with uh, Coop the Grace. We'll play a reconnaissance to uh, gain uh, some skulls, which can later be converted into attacks and also a surveillance for the same reason. Hopefully we'll be drawing a Coop the Grace to, to end the game pretty fast. We'll actually play a robbery so we can uh, uh, rob some uh, resource from him and play also a waylay so we we put some damage in. We'll play a misdirect to mitigate a little bit the the damage from barrel pump and um, instead we'll start attacking with the skull as I don't want the embezzle uh, to be stealing my skull. Instead, uh, if uh, they steal the gold, uh, I'm fine with it. And we see that we are pretty close to to killing him, but he is also pretty close to killing us. 
we'll play an informant to get uh, a card, which is surveillance, which is always nice. And uh, we'll attack so it does not steal uh, the, the school, even if we'll be losing the informant. But we'll be losing him uh, anyway, because he had a school. And actually, a pretty close game, because uh, we killed him with only two health remaining. GG. So, the fourth and final deck I'll be showing you is a um, Raktaban deck. Uh, which is also the first hero you'll be unlocking for Endazu. And uh, the Raktaban hero uh, power reads uh, play an incantation plus one magic. And, and you get a plus one magic when you play an incantation. So we see that incantations are those cards. And uh, we actually have um, available uh, only those four and this one. Uh, at uh, common and uncommon rarity, so we cannot uh, focus all our deck uh, on playing incantations. But we actually do run uh, four of them, so we can gain uh, an additional bonus from the the Raktaban uh, hero power. The the other cards are uh, cards which can um, generate additional magic, which is always uh, good uh, as a plain resource or uh, to use uh, and. Uh, Synergize with the other cards uh, of Endazu, like Grave Contract. Uh, we can feed one magic into it uh, and get a Gilded Warrior, which is a warrior, <laughs> which attacks. And uh, also we have Enchanted Treaty, uh, which reads Il de Foe, and we gain uh, plus one magic. So in um, in in plain numbers, uh, E heals for one, and we get a magic. So if we attack the hero with that magic. Uh, we did nothing, uh, but uh, translating uh, the the healing of the hero into our our magic, uh, we can use uh, to get um, as gold or to synergize with the great contract and stuff like that. Is what uh, really makes this card strong. Also, we have gilded scribes to get additional charges uh, to our incantations and blood pact to synerg which we synergize pretty pretty well with Zanzigar. Uh, which is a, an awesome card. Um, it reads uh, feed uh, four of your own HP to get plus one uh, charges permanently, and uh, it attacks uh, each time with um, for each charge uh, it has uh, on it. And so you can see that uh, first turn you play it and feed all your HP into it, and you have a five-five. Uh, attacker creator uh, on the first turn so it's actually pretty good and with blood pact we can feed uh, him charges uh, at, an, uh, at a discounted cost if you will and so it's a pretty neat combo and also gaining uh, some charges on those cards is always nice so let's jump into the match so we are against Caliphate which is another Endazu hero and so we see that uh, we get the combo I previously mentioned, and so we'll play a Zanzigar and a Blood Pact, and uh, feed uh, the Blood Pact so the Zanzigar get uh, the charges. And we do that three times, and also the last additional charges, so we have the the 5 health, uh, 5 attacking creature on the first turn, which is uh, pretty nice. So we'll actually um, hold on from the Blood Pact and we'll play a uh, Behold Veil to end play him uh, um, yeah, instantly so we get two golds and uh, with that two, sorry, two magic and that with that uh, two magic we can kill a Conjured Warrior so our Jamzigar stays alive for more time now we'll actually play another Jamzigar play the Behold uh, the Veil first so the, the Blood Pact does not give the the Behold the Veil the charge and uh, we'll get another Zamjigar uh, at 4 uh, um, HP and we'll actually heal a little bit because if he uh, gets some resources uh, he will kill us so we get uh, another Blood Pact and so we we feed the Zamjigar and we'll actually play an Altinger Burke to intercept uh, two attacks and uh, stay healthy uh, if he we get some resources and uh, so we'll, we'll be a little bit safer and actually now is just a um, uh, thing of waiting uh, until he dies because the Zanjigar are eating uh, each turn and so his death uh, is inevitable on the next turn we'll be killing him and that's it, GG 
and that's it for the first video hope you liked it and uh, it will be useful for you also I'd like for uh, from you to post a comment down below to let me know what you want to see on the next videos see ya